Hello there, kia ora. Look, you might want to sit down for this one because I'm going to do something I don't do very often and it might come as a little bit of a shock to the system. I'm going to say that the National Party and a particular National Party MP did something right, even though it will upset some of the people who support his coalition partners. So like I said, sit down, take a moment. You may recall in December last year, Andy Foster, seen here from when he was Mayor of Wellington supporting a Trans Pride event, turned around and told press that as far as he's concerned with the New Zealand First and National Party coalition agreements, that funding would be stopped for sports organisations if they didn't outright ban trans people or at least put in some kind of procedures and policies around keeping people safe in sports. And that kicked off a whole bunch of really weird things. The first thing was that really weird interview that he had with Amelia Wade, where he talked down to her about, well, you're a woman, so you should totally understand where we're coming from with this one. It was creepy on every level. But it started a conversation between Sport New Zealand and Chris Bishop, the Minister for Sport, where they basically wanted to please explain, because this impacts their funding and what they can do with the numerous sports codes that they work with and had been working with. When Chris responded saying basically, well, tell me what's going on, they came back with a huge number of different things that they'd done, different organisations that they'd worked with, groups that had come up with their own policies, for example, and the policies that Sport New Zealand had suggested that had been sort of enacted by a bunch of different amateur sports organisations. And they also reiterated the fact that amateur sports organisations are amateur. People who get involved in them are doing it for things like health and fitness reasons or because they want a sense of community and to be included in communities. It's all about inclusiveness. And Chris Bishop, to his credit, turned around and said, cool, I don't see any problem with what you're doing. We just put this on the watch list. Basically, we'll sit back, wait and see what you, the experts in the field, do, and we'll just let it be for now. Not a bad action at all. What was interesting was how Winston Peters took it. You see, he decided to go on Twitter, make a really strange comment about how they're still going to be sticking to their coalition agreement because it's about fairness in sport, which got a few of his followers upset. You see, this is very much a very vague comment that could be interpreted by some as him saying, no, we will force this through, and others saying, well, no, we're agreeing with the party. It's too vague for his idiotic followers to really understand what's going on, and that's very deliberate because his followers are idiots and he knows he just has to keep them riled up to get their votes. But here's the really disingenuous thing. When it comes to this country and our population breakdown, about 5% of the population identifies as being part of the rainbow community. Less than 1%, about half a percent of the total population in the country identify as being trans, which is really, really small. In fact, it's less than 5,000 people actually identify as being a trans woman, spread across a population of over 5 million. This is not, not an issue at all when it comes to sports or any other kind of activity because those numbers aren't overly massive to begin with. This is very much the kind of thing that's been blown out of proportion by people who want to grift, who want to get people angry, who want to rage farm, and who want to ensure that those votes are still going to the conspiracy cooker party that New Zealand first has become. It's really kind of depressing how easy it is for particular politicians to sit there and target such a small minority and to vilify them in such an offensive way that they could be willing to harm what Sport New Zealand does and the organisations that they work for or work with and the organisations that have come to them saying, hey, how do we deal with this and the ones that have created their own policies? It's really, really nasty. So good on Chris Bishop for turning around saying we don't actually need to do anything here because the organisations are doing it themselves. The organisations understand what the complex issues are at hand and we should bow to their expertise.